Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? This is Joe Figueroa with another video in our series, The Science of Salsa. An in-depth look at the whys, but also the hows of all things salsa and mambo. Dancers should be able to practice this material individually or with a partner. This week's video is going to be a look at one of the most used, loved, hated, and debated movements in salsa. The back pass, a staple of intermediate salsa movements that is often done poorly by leads and follows. But today I'm going to try to fix all that. So take this moment to subscribe and ring the bell because we're starting right now. I shot this in February and was supposed to put it out last month, but the coronavirus hit the states and kind of forced me to change my content schedule, so I'm bringing it to you now. The back pass is something that anyone who dances salsa has seen before in some form or another, socially, in a class, or on stage. So first, a little history. It's not really a movement. It's choreography. The way I see it, and I've said this in other videos, any true movement must be done within the confines of a single count of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Anything beyond a count of eight is technically choreography because it assumes the follower knows the entire sequence before the lead attempts it. True lead and follow is being able to string together counts of eight to make it seem choreographed. Being able to change from the next assumed movement to something else, well, that's where the fun begins. What I think happened is one of two different scenarios. First one is some couple or group performing at some time in salsa history placed this piece in a routine. As stands to reason, while social dancing with their partner, that piece from their choreography was executed. Scenario two, people watching it in a performance saw it and began to emulate it. Next thing you know, the back pass is born. I've seen it shown in a class or workshop many times over the years, but never saw it truly explained. So what is it? Well, it's two inside turns strung together. The ending of one being the beginning of the next. And that's it. Now, of course, there are variations. I've seen follows make very interesting choices coming out of this. But what we are talking about today is this at its base. Now, let's do a little kinesiology, shall we? This is a simple version of the movement. Not the only way, but a good base for leads and a good base for follows to see it coming. But the leading and following techniques used to string this together are tried and true. I'm going to start in closed position and then imply a cross-body movement. That becomes a simple inside turn, led from the shoulder. Now what I want to do here is give my partner the feel that she is still being guided throughout the entire turn, and even its supposed ending. Look here at my left arm leads as I first extend my arm out in front of me as I lead Kim past me. I say in class all the time that the lead should bring the follow's body to your hand, not your hand to the body. So after I have led her past me into my left hand, I make contact with her right shoulder. Using that new contact, I begin to guide Kim to her left for the inside turn. This should be common practice for any lead, but right here is the technique I use to make this work. Look here how I keep that point of contact to her and bring it downward from her shoulder to the small of her back. What I do is simply flip my wrist. The turn begins with my thumb up, and as her turn begins, I flip my wrist to turn my thumb downward. This way I can move down to her middle and never disconnect. This not only guides her turn to its end, it also stabilizes her, giving her a cushion if you will. One other thing it does is tell the follow that they aren't done. With my new contact at her middle and Kim's completion of the turn by stepping straight back on her right, I extend my arm to its length as I break back for what is known as the cumbia step. This puts both of us in a back break position, which creates an elastic effect in the lead's handhold. It's that elastic effect that informs the follow of what's next. Here we are in the middle of the count. Kim has taken her prep steps, as have I, which are 1, 2, 3, if you're dancing on 1, 6, 7, 1, if you're dancing on 2. I also used my left hand at her back to guide her behind me. At this point, leads, your partner should be directly behind you. Look at this as a safe zone. Granted, the lead is blind on the partner, but it's just for a moment. Plus, you know where they are because you put them there. At this point, the lead would complete their cumbia step by stepping with their right. Let's call it five, if they're dancing on one. I gave her her one, two, three. Next for her is five. I glance to my right as I step back at an angle and extend my right hand low to my arm's length in order to make contact with Kim's hip, which should be coming into my reach around the same time. Safety tip, leads don't ever just go grabbing, hoping to get something, anything in your hand to use as lead. Look where you place your hands. Look where you make contact. In this scenario, I only see two acceptable points of contact on a follow, the shoulder line and the hip line. Don't grab at the waistline. It can be interpreted as crass. Anyway, now because I have stepped back on five from my cumbia break, 
I can see my partner in front of me. I extend my arm to make slight contact with her hip. Now here is where it's clear to me that this is choreography that has been adopted into the social dance lexicon. From this contact at the hip, the follow is expected to know that another turn is to be accomplished. I don't really like that. As a lead, my options are limited. This point leaves the lead in a position to become offensive in order to get said movement done. The best you can do is give a slight touch to the hip hoping that the follow takes that to mean an inside turn. And that's pretty much how it's done from the lead's point of view. Now for the follows. You feel your partner lead you into a crossbody movement. The contact at the shoulder tells you it's an inside turn, and you go into it like you normally would. Coming out of said turn, you notice the partner's hand at your back. This is where it becomes tricky. But as long as you apply basic principles, you should be fine. First, use the line to your advantage. Even here, where you would find yourself behind the partner's back, you still have a clear path given to you. Go with it. As you can see here, the back pass is really just two inside turns strung together. She is literally doing the same thing twice. The first inside turn places you behind the partner with their hand at your lower back. The natural thing to do here is to raise your left arm up in a styling form. Using both arms is also a possibility. Follows usually feel a sense of tightness here, as if they need to slip through a narrow space. This causes the follow to tilt to their side, putting themselves back to back with the lead at mid count. That is a bad social dance habit. Now in a performance, this would make sense, as if you are tilted to face the audience, presenting yourself in some fashion. But this is not a performance. If the lead isn't familiar with you or what you are attempting, they may find themselves with a handful of your butt cheek if you were tilted while behind them. Best bet is to keep the line. Take the steps that belong to you. One, two, three, and your direction step five. You can see here that the lead should provide you with your prep, your one, two, three, or 671 if you're dancing on two, and then provide you with direction. That would be your step forward with your left. These are the steps any follow would take while doing their basic, and you can see that they apply here. This is the point of confusion for the follows, just like it is for the leads. The follow just has to know that what is next is an inside turn. This again bothers me, but I understand that it exists, so I just like to be able to attempt it in the safest and clearest way possible. Now there are other possibilities coming out of this back pass, but if you're going to go with the standard inside turn, go with what I've shown here. The end result looks like this. Leads, once you have this mastered, you can then attempt things that you would normally do out of an inside turn. Hip or shoulder checks, for example. What's important to take from this is the technique for both leads and follows. So when you come across this on the dance floor, you are prepared. That's going to do it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one. And remember, keep dancing.